Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 42, Build a Pattern, coming from the previous episode where we revisited the pattern matching. Now the Builder Design pattern is useful because we have uh, certain problems in Rust, and that these are we do not have default values for our function arguments, we do not have function overloading like C++ does, so Python doesn't either, but it allows for default values, and we cannot use certain keyword arguments only when we call a function. So we always have to define everything. And this ends up for us having this problem. We have no optional arguments and that can become very annoying. Now using this builder design pattern, we can work around that to simulate this feature set that Python offers and many other programming languages as well. During uh, this episode, we will also discuss this very useful crate called the Derive Builder. This will help you automatically generate those builders for you, and you don't have to write the code manually. Let's hop over to uh, the code. As uh, usual, on the left, Python on the right, we have the Rust code. This time, they don't match at all because, well, it doesn't make sense to use a workaround in Python do something that it can do in the first place. So for the first uh, simple example, we have this uh, user class that has ID, email, first and last name, and we also have that over here in Rust. In Rust, of course, we have to define the data types that we want to use for each of those. And in Python, you can see that for the constructor, I'm already using those default values as an option meaning that I can call the constructor only using UID and email, and it will be happy because it will use this default value for the initialization. This cannot be done in Rust. If I were to directly use the user struct and construct it, I would have to use all four fields, and I would have to then, if I do this in my code on multiple spots every single time, also put none for first and last name, even though I don't really care about those two values. Now, how can we work around that? Well, the Rust community has this convention to use the type name, so user, and attach with a capital B the word the builder to it to create those uh, builders. And these builders then help us create the actual type that we want to build, in this case, the user, but without having to name every single argument. Let's see how this is uh, done for us in uh, this mini example. So we create the constructor with this uh, method uh, new that is attached to our user builder and we accept everything that implements an into i32 trait for the ID and for email we accept everything that implements into string. Once we have done that, we can now return a user builder from our new function that by default sets those two values to the arguments that have been passed in using the into conversion and we set first and last name to none so that basically matches as if we called the init with only the first two arcs and now in order to mimic uh, keyword arguments we can now write a method first name it's attached to the user builder and it consumes a mutable self therefore this is a cheap operation because it also returns this self right away meaning we can chain those calls so we can call the new and chain directly a first name and directly a last name call for example giving a very concise code block that initializes the values we use the same trick that we did for the constructor we implement we take everything that implements into a string then this is the reason why it has to be uh, mutable we set the attribute and uh, we return self now let's hop uh, further down in the Python code and of course also in the Rust code. We can still see here now the last name implementation as it was for the first name. And the most important uh, method for a builder of course is the build method. And this one will return the actual object that it builds. So in our case, uh, the user. What it does here is it also consumes the builder. So afterwards the builder no longer exists, we cannot create multiple users. We destructure the self into those uh, variable names, which makes it then very convenient to construct the user. And now, since we have that, we can implement our user struct 
to have a builder constructor that actually constructs a builder for us again with those uh, two arguments and from there we can then build the whole thing and here we have a convenience function that verifies that this uh, user has been completely set up we also have written this here in uh, python so that's simply a boolean expression that verifies all fields cool then let's hop even further down in the rust code to see how this is uh, used so down here we have our main function and the same is in python what we do is we call the user constructor and then we set the first name to bob the equivalent here would be we create our user builder that has those two values already set because they are obligatory and now we can set uh, the first name bob we omit the second name we call a build and now we have our instance making this uh, very readable so this neat trick in rust helps us to construct complicated objects without having to name all the attributes and we can conveniently see which attributes we are setting using this chaining of methods to build the object next uh, thing we do is we uh, verify if uh, bob has been completely set up and then we use uh, the debug output with uh, pretty printing to see the full uh, bob object and in python we do the same now the next thing that we have available to us in python is uh, setting a default value for our attributes and uh, rust for that has the default uh, trait so you can implement the default trait or have it de be derived for you so by default an i32 would be of value zero and a string would be an empty string but that doesn't really help us because now we have a default object that has to be defined mutable because afterwards we want to for example swap the first name that's not the idea behind building an object but the derive builder crate comes to our rescue the powerful macro system of rust allows us to create helper crates like these that would automatically implement those builder structs for us and this is exactly what i do here i derive from this builder and this will create automatically a builder for this channel struct for me you can see that further down in the code it automatically creates another struct that is called channel builder keeping the convention that the rust community has agreed upon another thing that we can do with this builder is have custom settings so in our case one option that we use to build our builder is using the same trick that we did above we make sure that all the setters accept the into trait being implemented and that's exactly what uh, this attribute line does so now we went over those attributes that automatically set up our channel builder let's look on the left what we've done in python to come up with that by using for example the data class decorator to make our channel a data class all we have to do now is define the attributes that we want and we can even give them default values this whole code block is the equivalent to deriving uh, the default trait because it would uh, set an integer to zero and a string to an empty string however now we can see that we have also made a channel builder in uh, python that would help us by default to set up the token to zero but the special info to a string with the value of 42 the channel builder that will be built for us by the derive builder crate can do that also because we can provide options to the builder and it will now have the default of zero for the token therefore i do not have to mention the token if i'm constructing with the builder and we can also provide a default for the special info now here's the tricky part these arguments have to be string escaped so even though this is an integer it still has to be within the quotes now in order to get a string into the quotes i am in here using a raw string that then uses a string slice that i convert into a string as the default argument to special info so now we can see that we do not have to write as we've seen in the example up here 66 lines to manually create our builders all the time we can use powerful crates like the derive builder 
to do this uh, for us. Now let's see how this is actually used in the end. Down here we are calling the channel builder default. So the derived default sets it up with the default values. Now I can chain a special info call and set it to 84 for example. And this is what's done here on the Python side. We simply create our default and now we are changing this value. Afterwards we can now call this channel builder's uh, build method to get our objects uh, C1. In Rust we can chain the call to build right after the special info and since the derived builder create implements error handling automatically for us because for example the into trait can fail, build returns a result and not directly the instance. To shorten the code needed to build an object we can also use the question mark operator. The second instance of our channel we are only setting the token so here we can expect the default value of 42 to be set for the special info. We do the same on the Python side and then we print out what's happening. With using the derive builder we now have all features that we are missing. Keyword arguments, default values because here I'm not set setting the token at all or here I'm not setting special info at all. Let's uh, quickly run the Rust code to see if that actually uh, works. So all we do is uh, cargo run it and we can see that we have the output of our complete uh, checker. So Bob has not been completely filled out but we still have uh, the first name set for example. Last name is still on the default value. And here you can see that the default values for our channel work out because token has the value 0 but the special info is 84 and here we can see that our set token value is respected but we also get to have our 42 and we do not have to name all necessary fields of the channel to set it up. Let's go back to the code. I hope this uh, short introduction helps you to transfer your Python code that uses default arguments all the way over to Rust. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be builder type state, which will build upon that builder pattern that we've just discussed.